Today I'm going to teach you a powerful but simple way of practicing fast moving passages. The technique is called practicing in rhythms and many people know about this technique but if you don't you're going to be so glad that you know it because it's a way of fooling your brain and your fingers into believing that they can do it. <laughs> what you do is you practice four notes in different four note sequences but you move those four notes over one note at a time so that by the time you've done four passages your fast notes superimpose on each other so that your brain thinks it's done all of those notes fast because it has. Then you just have to glue it together and it's easier than you think. Have you ever needed to learn a passage that's just moving notes for days? There seems to be no pattern. It seems to be just random fast notes. And you'll work and slave, maybe with the metronome, and you'll get it at 60. And then you move it up to 63 and learn the whole passage at 63. You might get it up to 120, but you never quite can come back and nail it successfully. This is a way that you can really nail these and retain what you've practiced. Practicing in rhythms. I'm going to show it to you first with a scale, D major scale, because everyone knows that. And then I'll show it to you on the piece from Suzuki Book One, Etude by Shiniki Suzuki. And, but it can be applied to any tune. It can be applied to a fiddle tune, to orchestral excerpts, or to Bach, or any style of music. This works. It works best when it's solid moving notes, because it's really easy to apply this technique. But as you get better at it, and if you're somewhat savvy with rhythm, you can apply this technique even on passages that have mixed note values, like some eighth notes mixed with some quarter notes. Let me start off by explaining to you the two note rhythms. This is the simplest way of practicing in rhythms, and basically it's playing a long, short, long, short, long, short, long. So your brain learns how to play every other note fast. On a simple D major scale, that would sound like this. Practicing in rhythms can be tricky on your bow. You have to be smart and not allow the long down bow to throw you off. You can't get stuck at the tip, so you have to chop. It's not a sustained note. Unless you're really good at saving your bow. You'll chop it and then you'll rest. And then you do the opposite rhythm. So you do short long, short long, short long. So in essence, your brain and your fingers have played this, and they don't know the difference. Sometimes that's all you need are, are the two note rhythms, the long, short, long, short, long, and then the flip side of that, short, long, short, long, short, long. Okay? Sometimes that's all you need and then you can play the passage. But sometimes you have to go into four note rhythms so that you're then playing four fast notes in a row. And we'll talk about that in a second. First I want to discuss bowings um, and practicing in rhythms and how that fits in. Um, and because we're training our muscles and trying to remember and, and create muscle memory, I recommend that you practice these rhythms using the bowings that you'll be performing. And so what that means is if you're up bow on a certain note, try to make sure that your rhythms end with you being up bow on that note. 
etc. Also, if you are slurring a certain passage, yes, it, it can be effective to take out the slur. Sometimes I just take out all the articulations and I just try to train my hand to do the notes, ignoring the bowings. Here's a passage from the Rigadoon from Fritz Chrysler's Sicilian and Rigadoon. And it's not the hardest passage, but it illustrates my point that I'm trying to make. It goes... And that's not even as fast as it's supposed to go when you're performing. But there's some slurred notes and there's some separate notes. So what I would do first, learning this passage, is I would take out all the slurs and I'd learn this passage Oh, there's a uh, difficult string crossing and my second finger has to hop or it has to land right on the two strings. I didn't notice that before but when I was playing it in rhythms, suddenly I realized, ooh, that's a spot. Okay, and then I would do the reverse bowing, or the reverse rhythm. So what I've practiced so far is... Okay, but I have to add the slurs in. So then I'd just try. I would just see, maybe I can do it without having to practice it more. Hmm. So the slurs aren't a problem for me. But if they are, I would practice the rhythms with the slurs, exactly as I plan to do it in performance. I am fudging on the amount of bow I use, so it kind of can backfire on you if you're not careful. But I am practicing my slurs going into my separate bows. And that's going to create good muscle memory for my right hand as well as my left hand. Okay? Um, incidentally, a very good passage in this Rigadoon to practice with rhythms is that crazy string crossing passage. Then the reverse. But sometimes it requires more than just those two note rhythms. Sometimes you have to go to four note rhythms and sometimes even eight note rhythms um, on really, really hideous hard passages. So that's what we're going to discuss next. All right, let me show you a scale using rhythms. This is the scale I'm going to play. Conveniently, there are 16 notes in that scale, so it works great with groups of four. Okay, the idea of practicing with rhythms is you play the first note and hold it. Then you play four fast notes. One, two, three, four. So if you're talking about a group of four here, a group of four here, a group of four here, you're going to stop on the first note of each group. I did that badly. Okay. And then the next rhythm that you practice is you play the first two notes fast and stop. Then you play four fast notes, three, four, one, two. Three, four, one, two. Three, four, one, two. Like this. One, two. Three, four, one, two. Three, four, one, two. Three, four, one, two. 
Okay, so you've slid the fast notes over by one note. Again, the first rhythm, stop on the first note of every group. The second rhythm, stop on the second note of every group. Here's rhythm one again. Incidentally, if you keep in mind that you stop on a down bow every time on rhythm number one, that can help. Rhythm number two, you stop on an up bow. Okay, so what would number three be? What would rhythm number three be? Stop on the third note of every group. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Four, one, two, three. And the fourth rhythm, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's the basic principle of practicing in rhythms. Now, it's not always that simple. Some people like to practice this technique with a metronome. And I, I go back and forth between using a metronome and just using my head. What you have to do, though, is make sure that you don't rush, because a lot of people, they'll go and they start falling into it. You can't do that. That's where a metronome is helpful. So let me show you. You have to wait for that click. Rhythm number two takes a lot more rhythm, rhythmic control to do it with a metronome. Rhythm number three. Rhythm number four. Okay, and what this does besides tricks your brain is it lets you pause and think about what you just played. That's why sometimes I like to do it without the metronome because I can pause for longer if I need to. Because sometimes there's something that causes you to screw up and you don't know it. But this helps to expose the reason you're screwing things up. For instance, there's a string crossing there. And I might mess it up and I'd be I, I'd recognize oh that's a string crossing and I'm not getting across in time okay so rhythm two and then you're super aware of that string crossing from then on out there's other problems that that are, can be exposed like a shift or a change in your finger pattern that you're not realizing and practicing in rhythms can help to expose that. Okay, now there's another way you can enhance the value of practicing in rhythms. I call it the super crunch. When you have to learn a crazy fast passage that you don't even think it's possible, use the super crunch. That's where you wait twice as long before you can go on, and then you play it twice as fast, like this. Rhythm number two. Rhythm number three. Etc. So that's a good way to even push the the difficulty level and train your fingers and your brain to do those small passages even faster. Then obviously we have to glue all of those little four note groups together. Sometimes you can you'll find that just doing those four rhythms is enough and you can play that passage. Sometimes it's not enough. So then you have to go to bigger chunks. 
then you have to go to pa uh, patterns of eight. So there would be eight different rhythms you could do. Let's stop on the first note. So then you stop on the first note of every eight notes. Okay, and then you stop on the second note. Then on the third note. And this is where it's really handy to remember what bowing you're stopping on. Then stop on the fourth note of every group of eight. Now I know that my bow hand and my left hand were not in sync that time. That's going to cause me problems when I try to um, glue it all together. So I better do that one again and pay attention to my synchronization. Better. Okay. And then stop on the fifth note. Then stop on the sixth note. Then on the seventh note. That was sloppy. That's better. And then finally you'd stop on the eighth note. Okay, and suppose that this is a 32 note passage, then you'd try gluing those sections of eight together. And sometimes it's helpful to pull back your tempo to let your hand and your brain get used to playing the whole sequence glued together. It will feel easy. And then you just play it a few times, a little faster each time, and you're set and ready to go. Okay, so now I want to demonstrate on perpetual motion, the Suzuki tune. Um, hopefully you know it. And I think that's all that I will do, but you're welcome to play it with me. I won't do the super crunch, I'll just do the first, second, third, and fourth rhythms. Okay, so here we go. Let's use the metronome so you know exactly when to move. Eighty-four. Quarter note equals eighty-four. One, two, ready, go. second rhythm bottom you're gonna have to do a lot of fast string crossings so if string crossings are a problem for you it's gonna be exposed on rhythm number two and you'll see why very soon one two ready go Rhythm number three will also expose a difficult place where there's two string crossings in a row. Ya da dum, eighty eight. One, two, ready, go. Four. Yo. 
I think that's probably one of the hardest ones for this tune because it just exposes, once again, string crossings. Let's try that. One, two, ready, go. is the basic gist of what practicing in rhythms can do for you. It is magic. It's like having a magic trick that can help you learn an impossible passage in very, very little time. All right, I hope that this gives you a tool that you can use, and I'll see you in the next video.